Today's episode of Blow Jam is brought to you by Lola. Get $5 off your first month at trymylola.com slash blow. Hey, buddies and pals, it's Blow Jam Presents Pod Smash, the world's best podcast that reviews podcasts. I'm your most humble host, Delia Blow Jam, and I am joined by my humbler host, Ryan Blow Jam. That's me. That is you. And before we get right into it, I want to let you know about our show that's coming up. Our band is playing at the Cafe Oasis, 142 Gorgeous Washington Street in Binghamton, New York, on Saturday. February 15th. It's the day after Valentine's, so have your have your uh, partner or be single and break up or stay together. I don't give a fuck. Come out and dance. It's yep. going to be a good time with Rye, who's opening for us. Crooked Knuckles is closing. Blow Jam's the meat and the sandwich. And it's going to be good. It's going to be good. So uh, let's do our first segment. It's called Feed Me, where we talk about our top three podcast episodes. So, what'd you like this uh, last week, or last two weeks, because we had to take a week off. Uh, we'll talk about that in news. But enough of me rambling, it's on to you, Rai. Okay, my number one this week is uh, Radio Lab. It's a science-slash-radio show hosted by Jad Abumrad. This week's episode is part one of, of a six-part series uh, brought to you by Radio Lab producer Latif Nasser. It's called The Other Latif. It's about uh, how Abdul Latif Nasser from Radiolab shares the name with a Guantanamo Bay detainee who's possibly innocent. Uh, he's also scheduled to, he, he was uh, scheduled to be released, but then Trump took office, and uh, his paperwork went too slow, so he ended up being trapped there. Bummer. <laughs> Which is a bummer, because Obama was going to let him go. Oh, well. Wow. So, what do you got? All right. Well, this one was... Uh... You know, not within this week, but it came up pretty recently. It's Hardcore History Addendum. An episode comes out twice a year. It's that crazy. And this one was over three hours long. Normally, they're shorter than your typical Hardcore History, like, five-hour-long episodes. So this was nice. It dropped on my birthday, and I looked at my podcast feed, and I'm like, what the fuck of all days? So that was a nice birthday present. Thank you, Dan Carlin. And it's called Glimpses of Olympias who is Alexander the Great's mom, Cleopatra's mom, and uh, their dad was Philip II. She was a worshiper of Dionysus, so definitely a bunch of debaucherous she was stuff. She a crazy lady. She was crazy. She'd walk around with snakes on her and, like, a... Sleep with snakes. Sleep with snakes. <laughs> and have, like a, like, a big stick, like, dripping honey. It's, like, weird, dude. Yeah, she... But she was, like, the mastermind behind it all. She pretty much stopped, like, a war from happening she she was integral at that stage in the game there was a lot going on yeah it was so, insane yeah so thank you dan carlin because we don't really hear that much about powerful women in history and hence glimpses because there's not a whole heck of a lot of information you got to infer you know sometimes she was a side character but it's an excellent show if you've never listened to hardcore history you're missing out Yep. Okay, so my number two is uh, Underculture. It's a comedy podcast where James Adomian and friends do impressions of famous people and politicians. Last week they had uh, a really funny episode with James Adomian as Mark Maron and uh, Jenny Pemberton as Conor McGregor. It was really <laughs> funny. This week's was funny too because uh, they had James Adomian as Chris Matthews, which is always funny, and Annie Sertig as uh, Amy Klobuchar. <laughs> raccoon balls yeah they're both pretty funny <laughs> it was really good yeah we were listening to it at practice last night <laughs> instead of playing our songs because it was that funny yeah should probably practice for the show yeah i know <laughs> oh well well my second is chapo trap house the episode dropped on february 5th it's called bernie one which uh it was an episode of exactly what i needed to hear to validate my own thoughts two days after the Iowa caucus and that fucking shit show and rat face Mayor Pete declaring victory even though Bernie won. 
So it just made me feel better. It was like chicken soup for my brains, my ears. Yeah, there goes that DNC trying to rig another election. Yeah. So it, Bernie can't win because they're afraid of socialism, I guess. And they're going to, like, say that it's the Russians and everything. I don't know. It's fucking retarded. Oh, no, I can't use the R word. I'm really trying to work on this, guys. I'm going to leave it in for um, awareness. Okay. <laughs> Is it my turn? Yeah, it's you're, your turn. You're going to throw it back to me? Yeah. Okay, so uh, my number three is Comedy Bang Bang. It's a comedy podcast with host Scott Ackerman. This week's episode was really funny. It was called One Last Heist. Scott is joined by Jason Manzoukas, the Hanong Man. Uh, Scott's old friend, Bullis Jackson, drops by to get the band back together for One Last Heist. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty good. Uh, and also, Cincinnati Playboy, played by Antonio Lembrandides, stops by to uh, talk about being the heir of the Skyline Chili. Pretty good. Who plays uh, Bullets? Oh, fucking what's his name? Sean, Sean Distin. Distin. He is one of the best ones. He yeah, plays Rudy North. He's uh, so fucking funny. He's like, we're getting the band back together for one last heist. You know, like, it's making that music from, like, uh... Ocean's Eleven? Ocean's Eleven, like... It <laughs> yeah, was pretty fun. Uh, I probably yeah. should have queued something up, but I didn't, so... That's okay. Whatever. I don't have anything queued up. We're raw-dogging it. Yeah. And my third raw dog is Mobituaries, hosted by Mo Rocca. It's about lesser-known people who we really should have known about and celebrated their life while they were alive. And this person that was highlighted is Anna Mae Wong, the first Chinese-American actress of all time. And, uh, you know, somebody who's not yellow-faced. She was in movies like Shanghai Express, Thief of Baghdad, which is the first silent film in Technicolor. And she had to pave the way for herself. There was nobody else like her. And she was an interesting lady. And I love ladies. I'm like LL Cool J. Okay. You know what reminds me of LL Cool J? Are you LL D-Bag? LL D-Bag. About to bring you some ads up in here. Okay. Hey, lady listeners of Blow Jam. I'm here to tell you about Lola, a modern approach to feminine care with their 100% cotton hypoallergenic tampons that ship straight to your door. Now, the major tampon companies do not have to disclose a comprehensive list of the ingredients in their tampons. So they use a mix of synthetic ingredients, including rayon and polyester, and they could also be treated with harsh chemical cleansing agents. But Lola's tampons are 100% cotton with a BPA-free plastic applicator that you could feel good about sticking in your pussy. And it makes your months a little bit easier with their subscription service, which is fully customized to fit your needs. You could choose your mix of light, regular, and supers, the number of boxes you get delivered, and the frequency of delivery. Your subscription is super flexible, and you can change or skip or cancel at any time. A little bit about me, I suffer from PMDD, premenstrual dysphoric disorder, so my periods are extremely painful, extremely heavy, and my brain is extremely dumb. So by the time I get my period, I forget to get tampons, and it's too late. So Lola's got my back, sending that shit straight to me, and it's safe, and it's just great. So I highly recommend you guys taking advantage of this offer. To get $5 off your first month today, go to trymylola.com slash blow. Again, go to trymylola.com slash blow to get $5 off your first month. And we are back, obviously. Now's the time where we talk about what's new in the Blow Jam universe. And you guys might have realized that we did not put out an episode last week. Yeah, we lost the recorder. Oh, that's so <laughs> nice of you to say. I lost the recorder. Yeah, she did. Ryan was uh, understandably upset, but he was very cool as a cucumber, helping me track it down. 
and we reached the Uber driver. It wasn't there. We went to Galaxy the previous night. I brought it to record our friend's Choose Not to Choose band, and uh, yeah, I thought I left it there. They didn't have it. I was about to lose all hope. It's a Zoom H6. It's $400, and I felt like I wanted to rip my eyeballs out and kill myself. <laughs> But we found it, obviously, because we're recording it right now. How'd we find it? <laughs> well, I guess we went to Cafe Oasis, but we didn't even realize it after the show. <laughs> we're so wasted. And uh, I guess I signed up for, like, a rewards program. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I got a text message the next day, like, thanking me for signing up for the rewards program. And then I was like, oh, did I go to Cafe Oasis? And I checked my credit card bank statement. And... Uh, Sure enough, yeah, at 12.56 a.m., I was at Cafe Oasis buying beers. Yeah, and apparently, <laughs> so I reached out to the owner, and he said that he saw us, and we barely drank our beers, and we walked out, and he was trying to say hi to us. We totally dissed the owner, and yeah. we got the show coming up in a week. Yeah. So he was really cool about it. They found it, so thank you, people. Um, it could have easily been lifted. I couldn't be more, more thankful. Thank you, uh, Cafe Oasis. Thank you, strangers, if you found it and turned it in. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, that was a bad move. I'll bring the Zoom H2 yeah. anytime we go on location. Bring the H2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lesson learned. All right. Yeah. So is that the news that we lost the recorder and got it back? I guess. I don't know. Is there any more news? I had a guitar lesson with Ryan Lee. He taught me a lot of stuff. I learned more in 45 minutes today than I did with my last guitar teacher the entire time. <laughs> that was like, oh my god, that was fucking 17 years ago. But it's never too late to learn some new skills. I, I uh, you know, whether or not you play, give it a shot. It's fun. I learned nothing. You learn uh, how to sweep a little bit. Not really. <laughs> well, <laughs> it takes like an insane amount of practice to do uh, sweeps on guitar. Which I'm not going to do, so. <laughs> I oh, don't well. know. You never know. But uh, No, I know. I'm not going <laughs> to. Mm. I don't touch my guitar until practice. Oh, I got a promotion, by the way. Everybody, be happy for me. Nice. Yes, my work created a new position for me. I am the Education and Quality Specialist. Actually, the name is a working title. I might be an administrator. So worship me, everybody. I'm a big deal. Mm -hmm. Back to podcasts. What's our next segment? We always do Ryan's new podcast, right? Yep, Ryan's new podcast. Ryan's new podcast. Ryan's new podcast. Ryan's new podcast. That's the theme song. Okay. Uh, all right, number one on my new podcast is it's called Dead Eyes. I was actually pretty excited about this one. Uh, actor slash comedian Connor Ratliff embarks on a quest to solve a very stupid mystery that has haunted him for two decades. It's uh, why Tom Hanks fired him from the small role in the 2001 HBO miniseries Band of Brothers. Uh, <laughs> we told by his agent that he said it was because uh, Tom, Hanks, Tom Hanks thought he had dead eyes, so he's like trying to figure... <laughs> What kind of agent would tell your client that? But that's what he's trying to figure out. Maybe he's remembering it wrong, or like, eventually he's gonna talk, try to talk to Tom Hanks about it, if he can. But this is an excellent podcast. I give it twelve delegates with ninety-seven percent of the results from the Iowa caucus and a fake coin toss. Yeah, if you guys have not seen uh, this one precinct's coin toss for Pete Buttigieg. The dude looked at it. He fucking looked at it and just, like, decided. Flipped it in back Pete's over. Favor. Yeah, I flipped it back. Made sure to put it on heads. Didn't even try to cover it up. So look for that video. Do you have a podcast or, like, a segment or something? I have a Ryan's new podcast. Okay. Uh, they uh, <clears throat> followed me on Instagram. It's called Would You Look at That with hosts Clark and Pete. And the beginning of the... Fr okay, so these guys, they're from London... And they kind of sound like the London versions of Worst Idea of All Time. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, the beginning of the first episode was about public transit in Great Britain, where it's like, there's a priority seat, and if nobody needs a seat, you can sit there, but obviously somebody comes in, they seem to need the seat, 
it's not like America. You got to not offer it up or be really careful because in Great Britain, they'll be offended. Like, oh, you think I need the priority seat? What's wrong with you? It'll be like feeble old people. Like, what are you getting up for? Like, they'll be offended. And then the beginning (laughs) of the latest episode was one of them taking a pee. Is how they recorded it. Oh, wow. So they've really, uh, in the last six episodes, they've really transformed. I like them, though. They got good banter. Check them out. I give it one e-cigarette and a pair of Skull Candy headphones because I always forget about our arbitrary rating system, and that just happens to be what I'm looking at right now. (coughs) Okay. (laughs) All right, so my number two, Ryan's new podcast, is uh, Newcomers. Star Wars. It's a podcast with Lauren Lapkus and Nicole Byer. They've never seen any of the Star Wars movies, and now they're going to watch them all and talk about it on the podcast. I listened to two episodes. They watched A New Hope, the first Star Wars, and uh, Empire Strikes Back. Uh, It's pretty good. I give it 43,671 popular votes with 99% of the results of the Iowa caucus and one shadow app. (laughs) <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> and I, I'm glad that the order in which they're watching is release chronological release date versus the chapters <laughs> yeah, because right. they need to start off with the, the best ones yeah they're doing it yeah like the the release times the original yeah. trilogy and then they're gonna go do the prequels and then then do the last yeah trip. the way we all had to mhm and probably, right. and probably the other movies, too, like Solo and Rogue One, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. All right, go ahead. Um, I, that was all for me, for my Ryan's New Podcast. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. All right, so my number three Ryan's New Podcast is 27 Club, Jimi Hendrix. It's hosted by Jake Brennan from Disgraceland. Season one tells uh, the story of uh, Jimi Hendrix in 12 episodes. So the 27 Club, because uh, many, many musical icons all died at the age of 27. I listened to the first two episodes. It's very good. It's a good show. I give it uh, 26.2% with 100% of the results in the Iowa caucus and eight DNC members on the board of the acronym Tech Company. You know what? 26.2% is not quite 27. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I love your arbitrary rating systems always. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That was nice. Now, do you have any nays? Nay being what was shitty. Yeah, so uh, Pod Save America. I did not like their take on the Iowa caucus thing. They're kind of like cheerleaders for the fucking DNC. Mm-hmm. And they they like booty. They like the rat face king. Yeah, they're defending booty judge. Well, Pod Save America, what is it? Tommy Vitor, uh, John Favreau, John, John Lovett, Lovett, and Dan, Dan Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer. So, that was kind of shitty. It's like the opposite of Chapo. It's like they're obviously trying to fucking rig the election against Bernie. They try to seem impartial, but they are still Obama holdovers. Now, I was listening to Love It or Leave It, which just came out a day ago, and he was really touting Bernie, so I'm getting mixed signals. I don't know. Well, because they're trying to not feel the wrath from the... From the Bernie the Bros. <laughs> yeah. They don't want to feel the wrath of the Bernie Bros. Oh my god, Real Time with Bill Maher, by the way. I totally forgot to write that down. That was insane. Bill Maher's got to stop having guests on his show and not let them talk. He had <laughs> Steve Bannon on, and for like the first time, like Steve Bannon was like making sense to me. I'm like, what is up with this fucking world? <laughs> no, Steve, Bannon, live? Steve Bannon understands. He just consciously is a villain. <laughs> yeah, he's very smart and he knows what's going on and he but he directs his uh intelligence <laughs> towards the wrong side. He's just yeah. Actually, it's all wrong sides. He puts it towards evil pretty much. Yeah. But I mean like there's evil on both sides and then they're like, "Oh, well, you know, you can't really equate that." It's like, yeah, one one party does it out in the open and then the other one pretends like they don't do it. It's almost just as bad. I don't know. Hmm. The only bad thing is that it's rank, rigged in one party's favor if you put party versus party, and then the Democratic Party just rigs their own elections. Which is crazy. Yeah. It's like, why, that's why you can't it's win. It's not Russians. You can't win anything because you can't unite. <laughs> it's like, unite I, with the most popular one. I, yeah, it's like, come on, man. Give it to the people. 
uh, and all these pundits are like going on talking about stuff and then it's like wait a second they're all rich they they've got stuff to lose but it's like you're rich like pay your fair share fuck you ah okay mainstream media i don't have any nays i'm keeping it positive you got a shout out i do i have like several shout outs my first shout out is sword and scale and it's like three episodes the first thing that i want to touch upon is the two-parter about ezra canlis and this girl is like, she's got to be borderline personality disorder. Well, I didn't hear the second episode, so. Oh, okay. Well, don't even worry about it. There's a, a love triangle. It reminded me of being like 21 years old back in the day, just having fun, not caring about people's feelings. And shit got off the rails. And I can't really say that much because Ryan's halfway through. Hmm. But it did just drop, so you should listen. Now, the next one, I literally just finished listening to it. It's Sword and Scale Plus. I pay five bucks a month to listen to it because I love Sword and Scale. I have no problem with spoiling this for you because it's likely that you're not a patron. Anyway, uh, it is about domestic abuse where this girl on campus, it's where police fail to actually protect um, this girl on campus. She had a, a crazy boyfriend who said he was 28, he was a bouncer, and he was, like, living in her dorm. Come to find out, he was 37. He had a totally different name, and he'd been in and out of jail for raping 13-year-old girls. And she made, like, 30 complaints. Campus police did nothing. They didn't do, like, a one-on-one -on -one with her. They fucking... They didn't do so much. The guy... He was sending her text messages and at one point said he was the police chief trying to get her to meet for an interview. They didn't even care about impersonating a police officer. That's fucking illegal. <laughs> he did so many wrong things and they, you know, didn't interview her, take a formal statement, nothing. Well, guess what? He went on campus and shot her seven times. Jeez. Yeah. And she did everything right. It's just infuriating. But uh, that's sword and scale for you. They dive deep. It'll piss you off. Cool. I got a shout out. Oh, cool. Uh, my week with cats. So it's basically the boys from uh, The Worst Idea of All Time. It's uh, two guys from New Zealand, Tim Bat and Guy Montgomery. They watch the same movie over and over each week for a full year. But in this one, they're just going to go see Cats every day for seven days. In the theater. In the theater. So. <laughs> uh, it's pretty funny. Check that out. Give it a shout out. They're gluttons for abuse. And I also want to shout out, uh, was it fucking uh, Intercept? Intercepted. There you go. They, they did, had a great one. They did really good coverage of the Iowa caucus thing. It's kind of the opposite of Pod Save America. Extremely honest analysis. Yes. Fact it was somewhere in between the Chapo and the Pod Save one. Yeah, it was less <laughs> emotional. Yes, yes. Um, I got a couple more shout outs. Just Catch and Kill, hosted by Ronan Farrow, about uh, news media buying up salacious stories and burying the truth for rich and powerful men. And I just love the show. A new episode came out. It was really good. It was about Trump's love child with a uh, concierge at his hotel. And, yeah, it's really good. And I got another one, Risk, the podcast. It's about true tales boldly told, hosted by Kevin Allison from the state. This episode is called Revelations. It's about a very Christian woman and her very Christian husband going through a bunch of crazy stuff. So double meaning, what with Revelations and all, which is Ryan's favorite book in the Bible. Yep. chapter. Yeah. And I also want to shout out uh, Lock and Key. It's on Netflix. You should check that out. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop watching it. It's pretty good. Between recording halves on the show, Ryan was watching it <laughs> while I was stretching my legs. It's a good show. We're likely going to go right back and finish up the episode. Yeah. Um, well, that about does it for us. Uh, thank you. Would you look at that for following me on Instagram and uh, keep doing what you're doing? Hey, you guys, follow us on the social medias and we'll review your podcast. And we enjoy doing that. Um, also, check out uh, Mike Peters' podcast on the Mike with Mike Peters. He's a good stand-up comedian. 
and our 607 friends, Ocho Duro Parlay Hour. Yep. Three, 607 Horror Zone. Yep. Three Fat Nerds. Mm-hmm. Yep. And many more, They're which many, uh, yeah. we'll shout out once we think of them. Um, I'm at Sincerely underscore Robots on Instagram. Ryan has the True Blue Blow Jam name at Blow underscore Jam. We're also on the Twitter. Just Google or Google us. It's just Blow Jam. Just fucking Google it. We're on the Facebook. And again, go to the show. February 15th at Cafe Oasis. Day after Valentine's show. Break up, make up. I don't give a fuck. Just be there. Mm-hmm. Eat ass. Eat ass. You might have to fucking corner us with a Moravito, I think it was. Yeah, pumping gas. You were pumping gas. I like what I saw, so I hit you up. Anyway, uh, the other day you said you were down for the cup of coffee, so I'm wondering if you're still down for that fucking premium cup of Java that I offered you the other day that you so rudely didn't accept at the time, but I'm over it now, so it's about a week later, and I'm calling you now, okay? I'll tell you what. Why don't you grab the fucking hubby Ryan there? You know, I like that guy. He's a fucking good dude, huh? You get him in the fucking car. We'll go down to fucking D&Ds. I'm going to give you a go both a fucking extra large. Keep him on toasted almond roca fucking cup of coffee premium java I'm talking here, okay? Well, actually, if you look at the little old guy, experience on those guys on the street, they have some kids. They were a bit of beans, kid. I'm fucking talking top notch fucking black beans, okay? You know what? I'll tell you what. We'll grind up some black beans. I'll take the black man's out for a nice ball and cup of hot fucking joe. All right? Um, what you can do, too, if you want to relax a little bit, take a couple pills in your fucking kratom, open them up, and put them right in your fucking coffee, okay? Then you'll be stimulated and relaxed at the same time. So you're doing yourself a favor here, kid, okay? Premium favors. Real nice stuff. And when you get a spare moment, you know, call me back. I'm on the, I'm on the Staten Island Expressway. I'm about to come home to Yonkers, okay? I fucking, I, you know, I, I fucking hate Yonkers. The water's so dirty, people like shit. You know, everybody is a fucking asshole. So am I. So call me.